Verse 8, and I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Now, when God says here, I put her away and given her a bill of divorce, does anyone just think like, well, I guess God's just okay with divorce then, right? Like this is God's stamp of approval on divorce. But you know what? I've heard people try to use this as an excuse to be like, well, I mean, God divorced the children of Israel. So, I mean, it must not be that bad. You know, where, where the Bible that literally says in Malachi, God, God hateth putting away. God hates divorce. You know, that, that's why when, when, the, when people are asking Jesus, you know, he said, well, from the beginning, it was not so. God made them male and female. Right? And for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. And he's saying, like, you know, for the hardness of your hearts, because you have a problem with it, God allowed for there to be this situation where people can be divorced. But from the beginning, that's not how God made it. And that's not what God would want either. God doesn't want people getting divorced. He just made it an allowance because of man's heart, because of man's wicked heart not being able to handle it and overcome it he's saying I, I he made that allowance but that is not what god wants so so we see here god did god want his people just completely backsliding and going away from him and committing spiritual no, of course he didn't and also just understand he's talking about the nation he's talking about putting away a nation this is figurative language giving them a bill of divorce. What, do you think there's actually some contract written up with God's signature on the bottom that he handed to the nation, to whoever the king was at the time? Like, of course not. It, it, he's explaining what's happening with his relationship with the nation. He's saying, look, I divorced them. I put them away from me, right? And, and ultimately had them taken captive. So that they were removed out of God's protection, out of his land, out of, you know, out of, out of his space. Okay, you go over there now. That's the divorcement. This is, this is so far from any type of an endorsing of divorce. And people say, well, if God could do it, then I can do, you know, like, are you married to a nation? <laughs> are, are, is there a nation that's supposed to be worshiping you that isn't worshiping you? Are you God now? No, it's a different situation. This is not a justification for divorce. In fact, turn if you would to Matthew chapter 5. You know, I haven't taught about this, uh, taught on this subject in quite a while, and it needs to come up from time to time. And, and sometimes I think um, I ought to be doing a better job with, with some of these bigger doctrines, because this is a very important issue. Just an insight into my life, you know, so I feel like sometimes I preached on things enough, where I, but it could be like many, many years ago, and in my mind, I'm just like, well, I've already taught about that, but then there's a whole bunch of people that haven't heard this stuff, and that's the problem I face as a preacher to make sure that I'm preaching everything that needs to be taught, because this is an important doctrine, especially now more than ever with how many people are getting divorced and just understanding what the Bible actually says about it, because there's also a bunch of apologists for divorce Christian apologists in, in, in the form of pastors that are going to tell you why it's okay to just get divorced and why it's not that really big, that big of a deal. And, oh, look, in the Bible, there's all these reasons to get divorced and everything. No, there's not. No, there's not. And that's not what the Bible teaches. Jesus himself tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 31, it has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. And look, that is true. There is, there is that aspect of the law. But what does Jesus say? But now I'm coming to you and telling you, yeah, you know, it's really not even that big of a deal. It's not as bad as it was back then. Go ahead and just get divorced willy-nilly. Oh, wait, no. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Now, what did we read in the law was she could go ahead and just and get remarried. Right. But what's Jesus saying? But I say unto you. No, like like whosoever mar shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. This is how he's seeing it. This is this is this is even like 
like more restrictive. So you think things are less restrictive in the New Testament, uh-uh. Only in the aspects of the law that were fulfilled. But, but like this, this moral law, this, this, you know, this idea of someone uh, being divorced and remarried and stuff, he's saying no. And notice, it's the cause of fornication. I'm not going to get too deep on this, but fornication is, is what happens when people are not married and they have those relations. Because once you're married and you have those relations, it's adultery. And, and there is a, a caveat in the law that was basically saying, you know, because you, normally, and in a, in, a, in a godly society, people are going to be pure going to the wedding altar. There's going to be purity there, and it's going to be expected, and it's expected in the daughters of Israel, and it's expected in the sons of Israel that you would show up pure to your wedding day. That's why a man leaves father and mother because he's under the authority of his father and mother and they're watching over him and making sure he's being raised right until he cleaves unto his wife. And that wife is a daughter in someone else's house that's being raised and dad's got the responsibility of making sure that he's keeping his daughter pure until the day that she gets married. And then those two pure people are showing up to get married. But then if one of them finds out after they got married, like, whoa, wait a minute, what? You're not pure? What? You're pregnant? What? You have this disease? Hold on a second. That's not what I signed up for. That was the situation that was allowable under the law for people to get a divorce. But I also believe that that was prior to the consummation of that marriage as well. And that once you finally come together and make that union, hey, what, what therefore God has joined together, let not man divide asunder. And, you know, we need to get stronger on our ideas of marriage. 